Here's the scary truth about the Philadelphia 76ers. The beard has already taught the process his step back jumper, as with James set to be back after the All-Star break, the Embiid and Harden duo gives Philly one damn tough pick and roll to game plan for. Having said that, there's questions as to whether or not Joel and James' health and chemistry can coexist, so can the combined 10-time All-NBA players mesh? Despite giving up Seth Curry, from the breakout Tyrese Maxey to Gorgas Niang, along with the three-time champion Danny Green and now Paul Millsap, there's still a flurry of players shooting above or around 40% from three-point range. But how does the now number three scoring option in Tobias Harris fit next to James and Joel? We'll look at all that and more. Right quick, only 12.1% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. The city of brotherly love's new tandem of the beard James Harden and the process Joel Embiid are trying to collectively surmount their playoff shortcomings of the past. The postseason has seen both stars experience untimely injuries or disastrous performances from either themselves or their teammates. It's going to of course take a ton of time for this new offense to mesh entirely, which we'll dive a lot more into, but based off their shaky playoff outcomes in recent history, for Sixers Nation or surrounding NBA fans to recognize Philly as legitimate title contenders, James and Joel have to establish a sense of trust and chemistry right off the bat. Over the past five seasons, Harden ranks first in usage rate at 35%, and Embiid, who currently leads the league in that category, ranks third over the past three years at 34.2%. Considering only half of Joel Embiid's made baskets are assisted by a teammate, a number that places him in the 95th percentile among centers in isolation baskets, James Harden is going to be forced to do much less dribbling on the perimeter than he's accustomed to, and cede opportunities to one of the MVP frontrunners. According to Synergy, this is James Harden's 8th straight season that he's led the NBA in isolation possessions per game, and his 5th straight year of being on top in isolation frequency. The gap between him and everybody else in that area has narrowed since he went to Brooklyn, but given he still ranks number 1, ISOs of course remain the Beard's bread and butter. But here's why Philly's new 1-2 punch, at least in terms of the advanced stats, looks like it's going to be absolutely lethal. After Embiid sets a pick, rolls to the bucket, and catches a pass, according to Sports Illustrated, the five-man ranks in the 95th percentile at finishing such possessions. Displaying that JoJo will have to adjust his game as well, he rolls to the rim only 22.5% of possessions in which he sets a screen. Much more often, Joel prefers to pop out for a long two or face up in the middle of the floor. To give James a bit more space to operate, Joel may have to start rolling to the bucket more. There's no sign that Embiid wants to do that, especially if it cuts into the possessions where he's either taking an open 15-foot jumper or putting himself at the free throw line. To be fair, the Sixers currently rank third in free throw rate at 20.4%, so Joel improvising after setting a screen has led to a lot of their success. Since the ABA merger, the all-time free throw rate was set by the 1998 Utah Jazz at 33.4%. Even with last year's rule changes, a squad with James Harden and Joel Embiid on it should probably challenge that record. Then there's some numbers between the two stars that are completely different. Harden's Rockets always finish near the bottom of the NBA in passes per game, and the Nets right now rank number 28. Conversely, for Joel, even through a coaching change and the entire roster flipping over in a matter of years, his Sixers have always ranked near the top of the NBA in passes per game. In 2021-22, they ranked number four in that area. A lot of that's attributed to Embiid activating dribble handoffs in nicely run play sets along the perimeter. Also, the handbacks that instigate those plays and the free-flowing ball movement coming out of double teams after Joel gets to his spot down low. The Doc Rivers system features a ton of drive and kick and cut, with everyone enjoying the space created by the abundance of deep-range marksmen spotted up from beyond the arc. Whether or not Harden's willing to buy into the system will ultimately determine a lot of the success that Philly has. Throwing James into the mix will shift the landscape of the Sixers' offense both positively and negatively, but just imagine trying to guard an action that begins with Embiid at the elbow and Harden in the strong side corner coming up for a dribble handoff towards the middle of the floor and no defender's position to help on Embiid's roll. It's just damn scary. Or on the play right here, 
Just replace Nick Claxton with Embiid and watch Harden fly off a screen into a handoff. But how often could the Sixers run stuff like that before Embiid gets bothered by a potential drop in his numbers? Unlike advanced stats, ego and temperament make things very tough to predict. Harden was only taking a back seat to Kevin Durant, his longtime buddy, and the only person on the planet who, during Harden's prime, made scoring the ball look easier. So will Harden give up touches to Embiid, a guy who's never made it past the conference semifinals? He's going to have to. However, Harden wouldn't have said that Philly was always his first choice if not for his belief in Joel Embiid's greatness. As speaking on Embiid, James said after being acquired by Philly, we're both at a high level to where we'll figure it out. Joel does everything on the floor, so we got guys on our team that are very smart, we communicate, and we have coaches that are going to put us in positions to be successful. Listen here, they have something great already going, I'm just here to contribute. There's a lot of concerns surrounding the fact that Philly gave up Seth Curry, and those are valid considering he was shooting 47% on catch and shoot threes, and was one of Joel's most valuable floor spacers. In response to that point though, first of all, you have to take a risk to win championships, just look at the trades my Raptors made to win the title in 2019. Second of all, and more importantly, Philly still has Danny Green making 40.4% of his spot up threes, Tyrese Maxey making 38.5%, and Gorgas Niang making 38.7% on their spot up threes. Don't forget about four other capable catch and shoot marksmen like the newly acquired Paul Millsap, as well as Shake Milton, Matisse Teibel, Furkan Korkmaz, not to mention the third scoring option of this team in Tobias Harris, who's making a solid 35% of his catch and release attempts, although Tobias is much more than just a catch and shoot guy, as you already know. Point being, shot creation off the dribble as opposed to spot up shooting is what Daryl Morey's team was far more in need of, making Seth Curry somewhat expendable. Of course, as we went over, there's still going to have to be slight tweaks made in the playing styles of Embiid and Harden, but Philly's roster around those two I think seems well equipped for this team to make a deep playoff run, and if things swing their way, who knows, maybe 2022 is the year where the process is finally capped off. Will James Harden buy into Philly's system? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is someone who took home some shoes in my winter giveaway, FYI Sin, who says the Warriors should be a little worried because you really don't know if all players are going to be healthy come the playoffs. Appreciate every answer. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.